Hi, I'm Ginger Rem. I'm Martine LaDuc. And we're here at Brooker Creek Preserve to tell you all, all about, about water. In our last segment, we saw how wastewater is created. And now we're at the plant and we're gonna see what they do with that wastewater. Okay, Shay, tell us what happens. So if you look behind me over here, this building behind me is called the Headworks. So the first thing that happens once all that dirty wastewater comes into this plant is we have to take out all the trash. So to do that, we put it in this building behind me and we put it through what we call a bar screen. And you can see the size of these holes, right? They're actually pretty big. So all the trash is gonna get captured on the screen. Things like uh, floss, hopefully, those floss picks, those flushable wipes get caught on here. And then if you look behind me, you see that big metal pipe that's called a chute. The trash goes down the chute into the dumpster, and then we send it to solid waste where it gets incinerated. Now that we've taken all the trash out of the water and sent that to the incinerator, what happens next? So next what we do is we actually take all that lovely wastewater, as you can see behind me, nice and brown because it's full of lots of this. Ugh. So what you're actually looking at is one of several, we call these tanks, they're full of water, right? Uh -huh. And in this particular tank, you can see that it's bubbling. Well, people aren't the only ones who use oxygen. We're not the only ones who breathe, so do bacteria. So inside these tanks, there are lots of different kinds of microorganisms. And what they're doing is they're actually eating this. Ugh. As gross as that sounds, this is totally natural. The same thing would happen in the soil. So what we've done here is we've actually engineered something that's just like what happens in nature. So through a series of different kinds of tanks with different kinds of bacteria, we can help start break some of this down from our wastewater stream. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of this in our water. <laughs> Shay, I noticed as the water goes through the different tanks and through the process, it smells less. And when we got to this area, I really don't smell an odor and I even see a lot of wildlife in the water. Tell me what's happening here. Well, to answer your question, when we came from the last set of tanks, what we were doing there was we were actually giving that water to the microbes and they were feeding away at some of the carbon, right? The poop in there. So by the time we come here, there should be a lot less of this in the water, right? Or I should say in smaller pieces. So if you notice by looking out here, the water is actually very calm. This is what we called a secondary clarifier tank. And so this works with density. Here we have a bottle. We have some glitter, and what happens is if you shake it up, that glitter is heavier than water, right? So we say it's more dense. So what happens with time if we don't stir that water up? You'll see the glitter will start to settle. So in these tanks, the same thing is happening. All those heavier particles of this that are in the water are starting to sink down to the bottom. So then we can then scrape them off the bottom, and this is what we're gonna make into fertilizer. Now you'll also notice that there's lots of birds in there, right? Because look, as this is settling, the water is becoming clearer and clearer on top. So another reason that we have a lot of wildlife here, like birds, um, there's no predators. There's no alligators here to hurt them. You'll also notice that the tanks are open, which means any leaves or debris like bugs that might blow off the trees are gonna land on the surface of the water. So that's easy food for them. So one last thing worth noting before we move on, the building behind me over here is what we call the D-Night or denitrification filters. That's a really fancy word, but that's what makes our facility advanced. So we call ourselves the South Cross Advanced Water Reclamation Facility. And what that building does behind me is it helps remove additional nitrogen from the water. And that's important because if we put too much nitrogen out into the ecosystems, it can actually kill fish and wildlife. Jay, when we got to these tanks, I noticed that it smells like a swimming pool. Can you tell me what's going on here? Sure, in fact, you're correct in saying that you smell what smells like chlorine, right? Which is what we use in swimming pools. And we put chlorine in our swimming pools because it helps to kill the bacteria, right? Things that make us sick. So the same thing is true here in wastewater. So now that we've taken out the trash, hopefully we've taken out some of the chemicals, we've taken care of some of those solids in there. The last thing we can do is that we actually do what's called disinfection. So for the same reason that we put chlorine in our swimming pools, we can also put chlorine in our wastewater, right? And what that does is it kills all that bacteria because it attacks their individual little cells. So right here, you can see behind me what's called the chlorine contact tank, right? Or we call it the CCC. 
You'll notice that the water flows, it looks kind of like a maze, right? We call those funny walls that stick out baffles. And the reason that is, if the water flows in that serpentine pattern, right, like a maze, it slows down the flow. So that's the longer the time that the water is in contact with the chlorine. And that's very important because we know from science that water has to be in contact with that chlorine for 15 minutes to kill all that bacteria and bad stuff in there that would otherwise make us sick. One last thing I want to point out is if you look over there to the right where that yellow bar is, those cranes, that is our UV system. So UV, like what comes from the sun, can give you a really bad sunburn. So we either use chlorine or we use UV to kill our bacteria. One or the other or not both. But once the wastewater has either gone through chlorine or the UV system, it's considered finished. So one thing that's worth noting is if we put chlorine into the water, we then want to remove that chlorine water using something else called sulfur dioxide. And that's really important because once all the water leaves disinfection, it either goes out to our homes as reclaimed water or we can release it into the environment. But we have to make sure that water is safe before we put it into the environment or else we can harm all those cute little fishies and turtles and things that we love so much. Shay, sometimes I see these purple pipes in our neighborhoods. Does that mean it's reclaimed water coming from a facility like yours? You are absolutely correct. This is what we call reclaimed water. So when you see purple pipes anywhere in your community here in Pinellas County, that is water that came from a facility like this. That means once upon a time, once upon a flush, it went down the drain or the toilet, it got, came here, it got treated. Remember, we took out the trash, we took out the chemicals, we took out the bacteria, and now it's what we call treated. So we call it reclaimed water, and this now goes back out into your communities. It comes out of your sprinkler heads. It's just for irrigation, it's not drinking water. And if you're interested in seeing where your drinking water is located in your communities, look for the blue pipes. So the goal of your facility is um, so that people will not use as much of the potable water, the one in the blue pipes, for watering plants. They can use this instead. Um, and also, when this water goes back into the environment, it's not harmful to anything in the environment. Is that right? And the way that I think we can help you is you would use less energy to clean your water if we would remember to just put three things down the toilet. Number one, number two, and toilet paper, and nothing else. Is that right? This is Martine LaDuke and Shay. This video series has been brought to you by the Pinellas County Schools along with the Southwest Florida Water Management District. We'll see you next time. <laughs>